How's it going everyone? The World Series of Poker is finally over and I am back in Northern California today to play the Thunder Valley Run Good Checkpoint season finale. I think that's what it's called. Anyways, it's a great series. We're starting it off with a $400 buy-in, 250K guarantee prize pool, which usually hits 400K. It's a five flight uh, event, so it's gonna be pretty fast paced. I haven't fired a second bullet all summer long yet. Uh, I just haven't needed to, but if I find a spot because the structure is a little faster, I will take it and we'll see how it goes. I'm starting to really like the Run Good Tour. They do a fantastic job. They really make it fun, enjoyable. They care about their players and they are starting to have a lot of tournaments all over the country and stuff. So they're really growing. Also, we're at Thunder Valley, which, as you guys know, is probably the number one poker room in the country. They do an amazing job here. You can't go wrong here. If you guys haven't been, definitely check it out. Let's go. We are on the first break of the tournament. I still have about starting stack, about 23K or so. The only interesting hand that I played was um, the hijack opened, the big blind was 300, the hijack opened at 900, and I defended the big blind with jack nine of spades. The flop came out, queen 10, four with two spades, really good flop. Uh, he bets 1400, I raised to 4500, he called and then the four of hearts came on the turn, which is a blank for me. And he's got about 19K left. I have him covered by about 5K. So I overbet here, I, I bet 15K. And the reason why I chose the sizing is because obviously uh, if he goes all in, I'm gonna call him. Um, but really this bet forces him to play for his entire stack. It has maximum pressure so I can win by with all my fold equity um, and I could also realize equity on the river when I call uh, versus a smaller bet size if he just calls and then I brick the river then I have a tough spot on the river or if I bet small and he raises the turn then I have to call and the only way I can win is if I bink the river so um, I overbet here for those reasons and it ended up working he went in the tank for a long time and folded that's the only interesting spot so far though, but it's a very good table draw. Uh, a lot of inexperienced players here, so hopefully I can spin this up. A couple of levels later, I'm down to about 13 big blinds and the cutoff opens to 1.2K. The blind had called and I also called from the big blind with Jack-9 offsuit. And I flopped top pair. I decided to lead jam my remaining 7K um, just for protection because there's a lot of big overcars that can come on the turn and river. And the cutoff ends up calling the 7k, she has me covered, and I'm up against king 9, and her hand holds up, I do not improve, so that is bullet 1, and that ends the streak all summer long of not having to fire a second bullet. I haven't fired a second bullet all summer long yet. Alright, right now we're on a break, I'm sitting on a stack of 85k, I'm not even really sure how I got those chips, they were, it was just a bunch of small pots here and there. Um, here's an interesting hand, it was actually the last hand we played right before the break. Middle position open to 3500, we're at a 1200 big blind, so it's a almost a 3x open, which is pretty big. Um, I have ace jack offsuit in the hijack, I made the call. Uh, we both have about 90k to start the hand. And the flop comes out, jack 10-7 with two diamonds. He checks, um, I fire 4.5k with top pair, top kicker. He calls queen of hearts on the turn, goes check, check, and then uh, a black seven on the river, and he barrels 12k, which is about a pot size bet. And I thought about it for a while. I think in most spots, I would probably call this spot, but he doesn't seem like the type of player that's bluffing very often. I do think he has a lot of ace king and ace queens here that he'd be uh, playing this way on the flop and betting for value on the river. Also, this field is just so soft that I don't think I need to put myself in spots where I need to make a big call. So I reluctantly folded. He did not show his hand, um, but I, I feel like it was the right fold. So that's where we're at right now. Playing for a bag now for day two. 
But here I am getting it in on the flop behind with trip queens against a full house. I don't improve. And then shortly after, I'm playing the next starting flight and I run kings into pocket aces pre flop. And I also don't improve. And just like that, I'm down three bullets. I haven't fired a second bullet all summer long yet. Yesterday was a pretty stupid day. I bricked three bullets, got it in bad all three times. I was out kicked on the first one. Uh, three queens versus full house on the second one and kings and the aces on the third one. Today, we are off to another bad start. My fourth bullet of this tournament lasted about 10 minutes. I bricked a straight and nut flush combo versus a set. And I'm on my fifth and final bullet here. I cannot rebuy because Thunder Valley is a one plus one um, entry here. So I'm on my last bullet. Let's see if I can spin it up. It's been rough, man. Um, here we are facing an open from middle position. I have pocket sevens with just under eight big blinds left. I put it all in. And then the small blind reshoves for 20K and the middle position player calls. We're gonna have a three-way all in. I don't think I've ever gotten it in behind this many times ever, but this time I catch up. <laughs> a nice suck out with the seven, just so that I can three bet jam 13 big blinds with pocket tens, two hands later into pocket queens for the bust out. All right, Carrie bust me and now she has to give me my obituary. Okay, <laughs> Kyle, enough said. That's it. All right, quick backstory. This is Carrie Diggs. She is a regular at Thunder Valley, one of the brighter personalities at Thunder Valley. She's always playing like poker bingo where she has like a to do list of like things to do, like three bet, defend the big blind, bust a player, etc. And today she was giving out obituaries for every player that busts from our table. Some of them were hilarious. Mine was pretty plain and simple, but this is Carrie Diggs, everyone. That's it. Your name right. speaks for it. I got it in bad seven out of seven times in this tournament at All In Showdowns. That's not a winning recipe, um, but it is what it is, and I am out of this tournament. Today we're at Jack Rabbit Brewery for the worldwide launch of the Run Good Poker Series Hazy IPA. Come in. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. Everybody from Thunder Valley has arrived. <laughs> Very cool. I get to go up there? Hell yeah! Alright, come on up. Alright. Yeah, you ready? Introduce my friend Earl Mankin. He is. Are you the owner? Yeah. He is the owner of Jack Rabbit Brewery. It's a really good brewery, and he used to play a lot of poker in Sacramento. Do you still play poker? Yes, he does. Love it. But I heard you are over 14 in the main event. Do you play this year? Over 15. I'm over two. Over two. <laughs> Same uh, percentage. Yeah. Guys, look who's in the house. It's Trey. Hey, Justin. Get <laughs> we got hammer time. What's up, buddy? Oh, what? Are we back? No, we're, we're vlogging. Guys, I'm with Roland from the UK, the founder of Hendon Mob. I, I, I could not Are call myself kidding? the founder of Hendon Mob. The Hendon Mob was, was founded in 2004 okay. uh, when I was 10 years old. I'll, I'll tell you the founder of Hendon Mob. Barney Boatman, Ross Boatman, Joe Beavers, and Ram Baswani. The original Hendon Mob. Hendon, okay. Hendon for those who don't know, is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a little place in North London. Um, right up near the uh, uh, the M1, uh, the junction to the M1, um, and they were a group of four guys who, who travelled at that time around Europe and the world, 
uh, playing poker. And when they used to show up at events, people say, here come the Hendon Mob. So what is your role then now? Because you were 10 years old, so... No, no, so I, I, came, I came on board with the Hendon Mob uh, at around the start of, of 2014. Um, this is Wiss once it was sold from the original Hendon Mob. Okay, uh, to the current owner, uh, uh, Alex Dreyfus, shout out Alex Dreyfus. Um, uh, yeah, my role, uh, I'm now head of partnership, so yeah, I'm, I, I head up all the uh, uh, commercial deals for the Hendon Mob uh, and the GPI. Of all the places in North America, this is your first tournament in North America, right? First uh, tournament. So the, the Hendon Mob Championship, the, our live circuit, uh, was founded at the end of 2018. Uh, and this is the first stop uh, in the continent of, of North America, uh, starting tomorrow at Thunder Valley. And yeah, we're extremely excited about that. Uh, you, you picked a good venue because Thunder Valley is really good. It's, it's a great venue and a beautiful poker room. Cheers. You, cheers. Nice to meet you. What, what are we here for? Hey, we're here at Jack Rabbit Brewing, West Sacramento, tonight, the release party. You know what it is? The Run Good Poker Series. This is the Railbird. Oh, you're waiting the Railbird. here! Oh, oh! <laughs> 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 Alright, who <are> next? <laughs> Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go. I never turned out with us. Look at this. When's the last time someone fed you a beer while you were doing so it? weird. But yeah, okay. You're welcome. All right. I don't know what beer number I'm on, but I'm getting a little tipsy. What's up, Tana? What up? What's up, Haley? Yo. You guys remember Haley from the episode where we, uh, where, uh, she lost her laptop and then found it. It was Sorry. epic. It was we epic. We had to fight people for that laptop. We did. So we we did. Back at Thunder Valley for the Hendon Mob Championship 1B. Let's go. What's up guys? I'm here with John. I know he watches my shit. And today, we finally sat at the same table. We played a big hand. It was an all-in pot. So I opened the hand um, from the low jack. I, oh wait, hold up. The big blind was 400. I opened it to, to 1,000 from the low jack. The high jack called. She, had, she was pretty short. He's in the cutoff. He makes it 5K. I call with Ace King offsuit. Uh, she folds. We see a flop. It came out nine, three deuce. Yeah, all low. Is, yeah, uh, yeah. I think two hearts. Yep, two hearts. Two hearts. Yep. I check. He bets 4.1K. I call eight on the eight of diamonds. I think on the turn yep. it goes check check. Mm -hmm. That was your opportunity. Yep. And then the river was king of hearts. I rip it 16K. He snap calls. Both have Ace King. Ace we King both, plus. Yeah, we both have Ace King. Uh, why didn't you bet the turn? What were you turn, thinking? thinking maybe ten, tens or jacks, and you were going to fold. So, and then spade, or plus draws were out there. Two plus draws out there. I didn't block any of them either. So, I was just thinking, I, if I jammed, I was, in my head I was like, man, he's going to snap me off with jacks or jets. I, I, you're correct. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think you played it fine. Um, so yeah, we ended up chopping the pot. I actually. I thought I had the ace of hearts, but I had the ace of diamonds. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, that makes a difference too. Yeah, because when I rip it, I was like, well, he, I, I knew you had ace king. I, I felt really confident you had ace king. <laughs> but I was like, eh, I, had the, I had the heart, so maybe you will at least think about it. But it didn't work. <laughs> and, and I didn't have the heart anyway. So, <laughs> good hand. Thank you. All right, check out this really sick, sick call I made. Um, definitely a hero call. All right, so the big blind is 400, under the gun, starts the hand with 11K. He's gonna raise it to 1,000, the button calls. I call from the small blind with ace deuce suited. I start the hand with about 24K, and the big blind calls. So we're four-handed, and the flop came out 9-3 deuce with one heart. I have bottom pair. I check it, under the gun, that's 1,700. Only I call. We see a turn, it's an eight of hearts. I check. He checks behind, and then a jack of clubs on the river, I check, he bets all in his remaining 8.3K. I go in the tank forever, and I make the hero call with bottom pair. He shows 7.5 of hearts for a brick flush draw and a brick straight draw. I win the pot. A couple of reasons why I decided to make the call was because I think he's checking back a lot of his ace highs. I think if he has 
a pair of nines or eights. He's gonna check back the, the river as well. Um, so I'm thinking he has a hand like king queen, maybe king jack. I do block, he could have ace jack too, um, but I block ace jack. I really just felt like it was either a jack or, or complete air, um, like worse than ace high. And so I decided it was worth calling, I guess, and it worked out. If you thought that last hand was pretty sick, wait until you see this one. There were a lot of crazy sick runouts in this tournament. So in this hand, I opened under the gun plus one to 1.5K with nine eight of hearts. The small blind is the only caller, so we are heads up and the flop comes out nine seven six. I flop top pair with an open-ended straight flush draw. And to my surprise, the small blind decides to lead out for 1.9K. I want to build up this pot as big as possible. I re-raise it to 4.9k, the small blind calls, and we see a turn. It's not the best turn, it, gives, it does give me top two pair though, for a redraw to a full house, and I'm still open-ended to the straight flush draw. And again, the small blind leads out 6.5k, so at this point, I'm starting to think he probably has either the top end or the bottom end of the straight. I have to call though, because I have so many outs. And then he checks the river in the dark. So now I'm thinking what hands would he do that with? And the way that this hand is played, I'm thinking he probably has the five for the bottom end of the straight, or maybe two pair, like six, eight, seven, six, nine, six, nine, seven type of hands. Um, but I definitely don't think he has the top end of the straight. And I really wanted to just bomb this river to get him to fold, but there's two things going on. One, I don't know if this player is going to be too stubborn to fold the bottom end of the straight. And two, my hand, I still have top two pair, which means I have plenty of showdown value against all the weaker two pair combinations. So after thinking about it, I just check it back and he does show the 6-5 suited for the bottom end of the straight. Um, and that was kind of a sick one. All right, we are at the end of registration and it has been a wild day so far. After I lost with top two pair, open-ended straight flush draw, um, a couple hands later, I opened under the gun, the blue blind was 600, to 50, so I raised to 1500. The small blind calls, flop came out, 10 high. I have king queen off suit. I continue, 1500, he calls, the turn is at ace. I think that's a really good card for me. I bet 5k. He calls. I'm thinking he's stubborn with a 10 or something like that. So on the 5x river, I bomb 13k and he snap calls with ace jack suited. So that dropped me down to about 6k and somehow I've been able to spin it back up to about a starting stack. So we're still in this on one bullet. And this is how I did it. Here I am with seven big blinds. It folds to me in the small blind with pocket jacks. I'm gonna complete from the small blind and the big blind goes all in. I snap call versus king six and I hold. And then shortly after, I get it all in on the flop with a set of tens for another double up back to starting stack. Something else worth pointing out is that the guy sitting directly to my right is super, super splashy. He just likes to go all in and doesn't like to play post flop and he has like 150K in front of him. So. Um, there's added value in just being patient and not punting. But I wish I had thought about that before I triple barrel bluffed with the king queen hand. <laughs> now before we jump into this next hand, I just wanted to mention that I'm being moved to a new table with Jeff Platt. If you guys aren't aware of the current Jeff Platt jinx, it's kind of been one of the biggest things trending in the poker world over the past month. Everyone he talks to or interviews immediately busts out of the tournament. And as I take my seat at the new table with him, we start talking about a hand that I played a couple of months ago in Reno where I had Ace Deuce. Just remember that. So here's a big hand I play at the new table. Action folds to me on the button and I have pocket queens, a huge hand. I'm starting the hand with about 22 big blinds. I raise it to 3.5K and both blinds call. The flop comes out 987 with two clubs. This is a pretty wet dynamic board. It's not the greatest for an over pair, but my hand is still super strong. The big blind leads out for 6K. 
So I raise it to 16k. I want to protect it against the draws, and I'm happy to just get it in here as well if, if they want to shove on me. The small blind jams 24k. The big blind folds, I have to call off, and I'm up against 9, 8, and I don't improve. And that leaves me with only four big blinds left. I can just feel the Jeff Platt curse brewing right before my eyes. Jeff, this hand can literally prove if the curse is real or not. Because what hand were we talking about when, when I came to this table? Oh, okay. That's... <laughs> it's a good flop, though. It is a good flop, though. Uh, the, the curse is real. The, the curse is real. The curse is real. And just like that, I get moved to Jeff Platt's table. We're joking about a hand that we played in Reno a couple months ago, Ace Deuce, as I'm taking my seat. And in orbit later, I'm all in with Ace Deuce, with a nut flush draw on the flop, and brick, brick, brick. The Jeff Platt curse is still a thing. Time to fire bullet number two. This is a new starting flight, so we are backtracking now and replaying the 501k blind levels. Here we have a hand where the undergun player opens to 2.2k and I call from the hijack with queen jack suited and the cutoff also calls, so we are three way and the flop comes out 10 high. It checks around. The turn is an eight, so now I have a gutter and I have two overs. Any nine jack or queen is a pretty good river card for me. Under the gun now bets 3.3k, which is a pretty small sizing is about 25% of the pot I just don't think he has anything right now plus I have plenty of outs here if I do get called so I decided that this is a spot where I'm gonna go all in as a bluff for 19k and both players fold so I get some chips back there check out this sequence of hands that went down right before the break um, I've been hovering between like 28k and 32k all day long uh, I started this hand with 27k, we're at 1200 big blind, the hijack opens to 3.5k, the cutoff calls, the button calls, I look down at 9.8 suited, in the small blind at 27k, I rip it, they all fold, so I get the squeeze through, very next hand, I look down at pocket 8s on the button, the under the gun limped, the cutoff made it 4k, I probably could have 3 bet here, I'm gonna look it up later, but um, I just flatted and then under the gun flat is over three way and the flop came out 10, nine, seven. I'm open-ended, under the gun checks, the cutoff is 5K, I rip it for 36K and I get two callers. Uh, under the gun bets the turn and then the cutoff folds on the turn. The turn was an eight, so I made a I made, uh, middle set. But he already had a set of nines and I did, did not improve to the straight. So that was a really bad turn card. Making a set was a really bad turn card. That was the very last hand uh, before the break. And so I'm firing bullet number three now as a max late reg. I was making a run with bullet number three until this massive hand all in on the flop three way. And I'll have to come back tomorrow. I just busted bullet number four, I'm about to fire number five, and if that one doesn't work out, I'm not even gonna play the last flight. It's just been so brutal, and I just don't feel like playing poker tournaments right now. So, I'm gonna give it one last shot, and that's it. Well, I finally have some momentum going here on the fifth bullet. You guys aren't gonna believe this hand history. I opened under the gun to 2,500, we're at a 1,200 big blind. I get three callers, including both players in the blinds. The flop comes out, king, seven deuce with two diamonds. Again, I have pocket kings, top set. The small blind just leads out 10K. It folds to me, I raise it up to 22K. I don't want to attract any flush draws in there. And then the small blind just rips it for like 45 to 50k. I snap call. He has king jack offsuit with the king of clubs and the jack of spades. He is drawing dead <laughs> on the flop in a 100k pot. All right, we are on hopefully, maybe the last break of the night for bagging on bullet number five. Still hanging in there. Got Justin Hammer here listening oh, in. Oh, didn't even see you there. <laughs> um, 
basically I just doubled up three short stacks at my table on the last level. Check out this hand, it's pretty sick. In the small blind, I have pocket queens, I limp. The big blind rips for like 12 big blinds with ace 10, with the ace of clubs. <laughs> 10 Irwin. Oh, oh, and, <laughs> and the 10 of spades. I snap call, there's a queen in the window. It's a queen of spades in the window. The guy's getting up out of his seat. The flop comes out three spades. He has the 10 of spades, remember. Spade on the turn, spade on the river. So I double him up. That's just kind of how my day's been going. Fortunately, after that cooler, I was able to get back-to-back -back double ups. Here I am with my ace jack holding against ace four, like it should for once, for an 80k pot. And then shortly after, my ace king wins a flip against pocket tens for a 170k pot. So I have a healthy stack here at 4k big blind. We've seen some pretty crazy runouts, some pretty crazy boards, and some insane action so far today, but this is gonna be the hand of the day. I open under the gun with queen 10 of hearts, middle position calls, big blind calls, three way to the flop, it comes out nine, seven, four with two hearts. I have two overs, I have backdoor straight outs. I like this flop, I'm betting 16K, and then middle position jams for over 200K, I have to play this hand. I have way too much equity to fold here. I call, he's got pocket aces, two black aces, so I have all my hard outs. The eight of diamonds comes on the turn, which is a great card for me, because now I'm also open-ended. But the four diamonds bricks me out on the river, and that ends this tournament for me. I just busted the tournament again, and I'm really hating poker tournaments right now. I have not been able to get anything going on this tour, on this tour stop this week. This has been bad, so I'm calling it quits. As you guys saw a few days ago, we were at Jack Rabbit Brewery. They made the Railbird Hazy IPA for the Run Good Tour, and now they are going to be uh, releasing it here officially at Thunder Valley in the ca casino and poker room. So we had a little event going off with that. Just like the street lights lit this town, like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down. Can't be afraid to leave this out. We got All right, guys, I am here with Jeff Platt. Yes, good to be here. Hi. Reporter from Poker Go. Yeah, and sideline reporter, host, commentator. Yeah, go ahead. And famously known recently at, uh, for the Jeff Platt curse. Or the jinx. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not aware of this. Thing. Which I believe was, I was the last victim of it. You were. I was. Okay. But you know what? What's that? Now that you cashed in that tournament, yeah. your hand in mob is no longer 666. It should be, I don't know what you cashed for, but. $1,295. Don't mean to brag. So we're at 667000 on his hand in mob. The curse so is over. It's over. I was the Cheers. last one. You guys are welcome. I, I donated to the, the ending of the mm. curse. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, I am with Steven Song, super tournament crusher, especially at the mid stakes. GPI, GPI player of the year and GPI mid major player of the year, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, alright, got a question. Who was your first, or no, who, what am I trying to, uh, uh, who was your first Instagram follow? Wait, no, who did you follow? Who, for, for who poker. Was, yeah, yeah. Who's your first poker Instagram follow? It was the fucking this guy. Yeah, me, me. Okay, we're drunk. Me. We're drinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're drinking a lot. Yeah. <laughs>